Hi, my name is Stefan van der Walt. I'm a researcher at UC Berkeley at the Berkeley Institute for Data Science and the founder of Psychedimage. And here I'd like to show you how to segment a photograph of coins using Psychedimage's watershed algorithm along with region properties. We start by importing Psychedimage and checking the version. I'll be working with version 0.13. We then import NumPy using the standard convention, NumPy as NP. Matplotlib inline ensures that the plots that we make appear inside of the Jupyter Notebook. And here we import, import uh, Matplotlib's PyPlot API as PLT. So let's start by getting hold of some test data. So from SK Image we import the data module. And inside of the data submodule, we call the function coins, which loads an image from disk. Just remember to execute that cell. And let's have a look at this image. Okay, so there's our test data. And what I'd like to do in this exercise is isolate the coins from the darker background. So before I start, I'm going to smooth the image out a little bit, denoise it. So from scikit image, I import the filter submodule and I apply a median filter of size 5 by 5 on um, on that image so let's visualize that here we go so you can see that the first image has a lot of detail and after applying the structuring element that's what Selim stands for of 5 by 5 um, and doing a median filter the image is a lot smoother so that should get rid of most of the noise for us now our next step is to try and find the edges of the coins so for that we're going to be using the canny edge detector and that lives inside of scikit images uh, feature submodule so from sk image import feature and call feature.canny and the sigma parameter here adjusts the uh, the width of the canny or uh, how sensitive it is to edges. So we can play around with that parameter a bit, but you can see that we get fairly good edges of those coins out. If we make uh, sigma equal to one, uh, we get more noise, uh, a more noisy image, more edges out. If we set it equal to five. Uh, fewer and then we see that we don't quite capture the outlines of most of the coins so three is about a good value there still have some gaps over here in some of the coins but that should be okay all right so we're going to be using a watershed algorithm which means that we're going to uh, imagine that this edge image here is like a landscape and we're going to fill that landscape with water and uh, so we're going to place, try and place fountains inside of each coin and then we're going to switch on those fountains and let them pour water into this image landscape and then where the water levels join that will be the new regions. So in order to do that uh, we need to convert this edge image into a landscape and for that we use the distance transform as implemented in SciPy's in the image module. So this might be a good place to uh, comment on interaction between SciPy and Scikit Image. Most of the libraries inside of the SciPy ecosystem uh, uh, work with one another through NumPy arrays, and that standard API allows us uh, to to reuse SciPy here as well without a problem. All right, so let's call the distance transform. Um, this is the Euclidean distance transform, hence the EDT, and we call it on the negative of the edges. So the distance transform is defined as the distance to the closest uh, background pixel. So let's just apply it to the edges as we have it here. And you see that we get the same image back. So what's happening here? Well, it's telling us that um, the background is a distance of zero away from the background itself but any edge pixel is a distance of one away from the background so that makes sense if we apply it to the inverse of the edge mask 
So we make the foreground background and the background foreground. Now we have a much more interesting result. So this tells us, this map that we see here tells us how far are we away from a coin edge. And you can see that in the middle of the coin, we're fairly far away and outside of the coin, we're fairly far away. But um, on the edge of the coin itself, we're very close to the edge of that coin. Okay, so this will be the landscape that we will now fill up using Watershed. So in order to do that, we first need to find the locations of those fountains. So we're going to be using the peak local max function from the features submodule, and that will find peaks, uh, local peaks in this landscape for us. So um, let's execute that and visualize the peaks. Uh, not sure if you can see, but this black uh, image that you see here has got peaks inside of it. Those were the peaks detected. Um, we can probably visualize them better by looking at the actual positions and plotting those positions. So for that, we're going to be calling peak local max again, but we're going to be setting the indices flag to true, which means that it will return the positions uh, of the peaks instead of the peak mask visualized above. Um, so you can see if we execute that, I'm just printing the first five, but you can see these are the coordinates of the peaks coming back. So let's plot that in, in matplotlib. Um, okay, we're only looking at five of them here. Um, we want to be looking at, I left a colon out there, so we want to be looking at all the row coordinate, all the uh, x coordinates and all the y coordinates. So the peaks are returned in row column format. So each entry here is a row and a column coordinate. Uh, matplotlib takes x and y values. So we take the second column and the first column, the x and y values. Um, let's see what's going on here. x and y must have the same dimensions. Ah, we want the first column uh, second column and then the first column there we go all right so there you see all the peaks that we just found visualized so this will be the positions of the fountains that we will use to flood this landscape so next we're going to be labeling each of these features we're going to give them uh, each an individual number we're going to be starting with zero and counting upward uh, this number is used by the watershed to um, to label the region that forms around that little fountain. Okay, so each point gets a new integer label. And then we can call our uh, watershed function. We're going to be calling it on the negative of the distance map. Let's scroll back to that quickly. So we're going to be uh, inverting this map so that the low areas are high and the high areas are low. In other words, um, the center of the coin will become a trough and the ring around the, the edge of the coin will become a peak. That's so that this landscape can fill up with the water um, spouting from the center of each coin. Okay, so let's execute that watershed on our distance map and uh, with the given labeled markers. Okay, so this is the result. Uh, we visualized that using the mark boundaries function from the segmentation submodule. Uh, so that just draws lines around each, um, each area that was found, each uh, area of the segmentation. Uh, we can also use the label to RGB function found inside of the color submodule and that gives us a slightly different um, visualization of the labeling. All right, so we can see that the, uh, the background here uh, definitely well separated from the different coins. Um, some of the coins got split in half like this one over here and this one over here, maybe that one over there as well, yeah. Um, and then the background itself is separated into uh, various regions. 
So now the question becomes, how can we merge the appropriate regions together? So let's, uh, let's do another visualization of the segmentation we've done. We're going to be calling label to RGB again, as we did before. Um, but we're going to be asking it to, um, instead of using colors to represent the areas, to average the pixel values underlying those areas and to display those. So when we do that, we see that the coins, uh, as we've observed before, uh, are lighter than the background in general. So we should be able to, to uh, split foreground and background just by looking at their intensities. Okay, so to do that, uh, let's first take a look at uh, all the different regions identified here. So for that, we're going to be using region props. Uh, those will be calculated for each object that you see in here. So that object will have a region proper, uh, a set of region properties calculated. So will each coin that you see here. And uh, for the coins that have been segmented into multiple parts, we'll have a region, a set of region properties for each. So um, let's look quickly at region uh, props. Just to give you an indication of the kinds of attributes that we can compute for each region. So we can compute things like area, the bounding box, the bounding box area, the centroid, the um, coordinates covered by that uh, that object and uh, and quite a few others so you can look at measure dot region props at the doc string for that function to learn more about those properties so let's compute them and they get stored in a list uh, so a list of region properties and now we're going to be computing the mean intensity for each of these regions and draw up a histogram. So you see that there's a very clear separation here. Um, these are objects, th the mean intensities of objects associated with the background. And here we have the mean intensities of objects associated with coins. So if we split them here um, around the hundred and 10 line, we should have a pretty good segmentation. So that's how you would do it by hand. Uh, I think, you know, often we, we want these uh, processes to be automated. So instead, I'm going to be using scikit-learn here, and I'm going to be doing a clustering of the background and the foreground intensities. And then um, I'm going to, be, to ask scikit-learn to do that, um, to make that decision for us on what is foreground and background. So from scikit-learn's cluster, Submodule, we import k means and we tell k means we're interested in learning about two clusters. The um, I send in the region means, uh, so I convert those into an array, and scikit-learn expects them to be in a column format. So let's just uh, let's split that cell over there. Let's execute it. Uh, region means so you can see that I've reshaped it into one long column that's what scikit-learn expects all right so now uh, we have our k-means with two clusters and we fit that to the data here um, uh, there's I can just reuse that previous variable so I'm going to fit it to the means and then I'm going to be to display the uh, the centroids found for the two classes or for the two uh, clusters and there you see that it found two clusters one cluster centered around 160 and the other cluster centered here around 58 so that's our uh, foreground and background and now I can use uh, I can ask the model to predict label for each of my uh, regions and that gives me the label either foreground or background. Now all that remains is to label the image appropriately. So we're going to be uh, copying our original labels and then we're going to take the combination of 
our predicted labels with the different regions. And we're going to relabel the image according uh, to the coordinates of each region. We're going to assign that to whether it's background or foreground. This cell is quite dense, so it might be worth just looking at it for a few seconds. So we execute and we redisplay again with label to RGB, now on our newly classified labels. And here we go, the foreground perfectly isolated from the background. All right, so that's it for now. Uh, I look forward to telling you more about Psychic Image in the near future. Thank you for listening.